Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 243. I almost said 234. We are 243 in. We're in September. It's past Labor Day here in the United States. Kids are back in school. Everything's nice and quiet. And uh, yeah, we're doing stuff. Namely, the Wix online meeting. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. But we have uh, Bob and Sean with me and Ron and Jacob and Zach in the chat. Anybody else? Go ahead say hi. It's great to have you here. What are we doing here? Uh, we're doing triage. We did a sweep past all the Wix 4 issues. Uh, we know all those things uh, that uh, we are going to do and now uh, in Wix 4. And now we're going to go through the extra set of bugs that have come up in the last two weeks two weeks and uh see if we add any more to the world i think that's kind of a wrap bob you ready for triage let's go all right there we go uh we'll start at the top building bundles intermittently fails with io exception error five six eight eight two fun I don't know if it needs much more than I think it's title. pretty self explanatory. Yeah. Like bundles fail sometimes when I'm trying to build the whole thing. Cool. So, probably Should we take a look at 6902 at the same time. 6902. Bob's going to make me go random order here. 6902 down here at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, error light failed to save resource error 110. Different error codes, but what is one ten? Failed to open. Failed to open. Error open failed. Error open failed. Interesting. Two different error codes for well, one is access denied and the other is open failed. Right. All right. Yeah, that error open failed is very very close to e fail. It's not particularly useful. All right. Uh. So this is a long-standing bug. Take it in for, try to fix it. Well, both of those retries. are probably very similar to the one that is currently assigned to me, huh. um, where we decided last time was, or the time before, uh, was going to be a retry thing. Right. And I'm betting that these two fall into the same bucket. Okay. So does that mean tag you're it? You know, if I hadn't volunteered, you probably wouldn't have remembered until after the meeting. I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Uh yeah, I'll I'll take these. All right. Tag them with the other one and cool. I guess we won't dupe them because the error numbers are actually different. So I do yeah. appreciate yeah. that they're separate error messages given the or separate error reports given their error messages. They could be different, but they're probably the same must retry opening the file again until the antivirus gets out of the way. All right. Uh, theme you, uh, 6886. I really want to try to do the number first. 6886. Theme util coordinates and dimensions no longer support negative zero. Just from yeah, the right. This, this is just a weird one. Um, at some point during the development of theme util v4, um, you could use negative zero to indicate the rightmost or bottommost yeah. pixel in a dimension, and that doesn't work anymore, and I don't know when it went away. Negative one still works, but of course means that you have a, a one pixel thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I went, I went back, I verified that at some point early in theme v4, negative zero worked. Um, but now I went through it and I'm like, I, I don't know how it worked. So this, I need to do some more research on this one. Um, I couldn't find when it worked. So I don't think it was a public version of theme -util. Well, it, it wasn't a release version. It was definitely during the development of, of v4. Um, but I went back and and found a theme that used negative zero. So, uh, but I don't remember. I don't remember adding support for that. Well, um, if it fit perfectly, like it would have been right justified anyway because it, the dimensions were 
the same as the parent, then it would have looked like it worked. But it was just treated as a zero. No, this was this was definitely justifying. Um, the the example I found was um, uh, graphical buttons. So anyway, I, I will take this one uh, to go dig it up and see if I can find it because it's a useful feature. It I, makes I, yeah. sense. Yeah, um, but again, I went I went looking at because I have I have the version of theme mutal that that worked in and I still can't find out where where how it worked so I just yeah the, essentially this is a feature uh as Sean pointed out it didn't work in 3 um and again I don't remember adding it but maybe I did <laughs> magic but it, this was I mean this was years ago so all right um, I will take a look and uh, see if I can find out where it went, up, went away. It still makes sense to me. Essentially, the negative in theme mutal switches the coordinates. So instead of being the top left corner being zero, which is normal for Windows controls, it the negative puts it in the bottom right corner. So you yeah. go from top left to bottom right. It's a very nice way of, oh, I want to adjust these all from this direction. Works. Not very discoverable, but once you see it, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's terribly awesome once you know it's there. But yeah. theme mutal in general is discoverability. Oh, wow, yeah. things have disappeared. All right, great. Uh, moving on then. 6893, validate billboard panel children don't have common control attributes. Bob? I will take this one as well. Okay. Billboard panel can't have some of the... Oh, I see. So it just can't have... Panels always control. fill the the parent so oh, i see so you can't have x y or things like x y height width yeah uh, okay and the compiler let or somebody lets them okay fair enough no compiler no compiler i was gonna say that'd be no no not not a thing <laughs> as nice as it would be to be a validator but uh, right that's a just a feature the feature all in theme it'll making that experience more awesome than all right Six eight nine four support bundle updating in Wix standard BA. I asked for this. And Yet I seem to be getting all of the bugs. Yeah. Interesting. I offered to give you patching. I think. Uh, well, I'm beginning to think I, that might not be a bad <laughs> trade. Uh, so, um, yeah, um, the, it was kind of surprising that Wix standard BA doesn't support um, the update feed from from the engine um so yeah we should do that yeah, and I, I think I'm, we didn't add in v3 because the wix ba in v3 did support it which is where right we're improving right. the feature and that's why i asked for this is we have this feature for updating bundles from a feed and we didn't have anything using it and so when i created the the additional tools ba or um bundle i was like oh it'd be really nice if we could use this here so bob was uh, grateful enough to go and add the function I for with standard VA, which is what Wix additional tools bundle uses. Right, right. Um, so this is actually mostly working already. Um, one thing I did discover and uh, have started to, to work on is, oh, look, you're making a call out to, you know, an external network. It might take some time. Um, so I'm going to add like a checking for updates. Yeah notification just so it doesn't look like a tongue right uh, but otherwise yeah it works so technically i've already done most of the work but so oh look jacob's curious what's the desired behavior here the desired behavior is that with standard ba would support the update functionality that's built into burn so that yeah it, it'll act essentially like Wix BA does. You'll get a notification kind of like um, the screen that you can see. If you click continue, it will uh, skip the update and just go on to the, the normal, uh, go on to the install page of the current version of the bundle. Um, and if you click update, it will do the normal update replace planning. 
And so Jacob says he has an implementation of this already in his that. I I did peek around because I knew that, um, but it's uh, the th this is a this is a normal check. So yeah, what's the so if you have a feed and you're installing with full UI, it will go to this page that you can see that I'm pointing at with my cursor and you're not seeing that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so if you don't have a, a feed, there's no change in behavior. So when you say installing, you mean the verb, the install command was provided or, or that default. it's not installed yet? It's yeah, it's not installed and you're installing and there's an update and uh well sorry. I go through the normal update um callbacks, right? So there's on detect update, I enable update checking if you have a feed and we're installing in full UI mode. And then I guess I don't think Wix standard VA used to show UI during detect, right? Um, it actually can. Um, there is a loading page that, if present, will get shown on initialization. Mm -hmm. uh, but the themes that we ship do not have one. So I added one, and that's where I'm sticking the uh, checking for updates uh, message. Uh, Jacob, yeah, your your BA has that that extra command line uh, action essentially, um, and yes, this is only when you're running the bundle. So the scenario is it's, it's like it's like Wix um, or Wix three. The Wix three bundle, um, if you try to install one that has been you know replaced with a newer version, um, then You'll you know, you'll get a notification. Um, currently, it's only on a fresh install. Um, actually, well, no, I'm now going to make myself a note to check that out um, because I don't know what the behavior is. Actually, I suspect if you run modify, you'll get the same thing. I'll have to take a look. I think that's desirable behavior, right? I think. I don't think anyone would object to that. Well, you're not really interested in seeing that there's an update if you're trying to uninstall. Uh, that is true. But we don't, we force everyone to go through the modify experience. Well, even if you click uninstall from ARP. I mean, technically, the only two options today are repair or uninstall. Yeah. And people can disable the repair. True. Sure. But... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, this is... This is a modal page, right? Um, essentially, you have to dismiss it if you want to get to the existing version. Um, I kind of like Jacob's approach of having an explicit check for updates. Um, if you know, if your primary goal is to get into modify in order to in order to uninstall i don't think wix did a check during modify wix well, 3, sorry. with wix, wix all 3. the buttons were there all the time so it would do a check on modify but it would just be in the corner where you can just ignore it and hit and uninstall anyway uh, that's what it was yeah, some of the buttons 
weren't lit up. Like during a downgrade, you couldn't, a downgrade would not let you proceed with it, with an install, but it would find an update. Huh. I will, I will see what the behavior is. Um, I think I'm okay with it if you go into ARP and you get this kind of prompt that says there's an update available. I will have to check on that. I'm explicitly looking for, for install, so I don't know off the top of my head whether burn is going to detect. Yeah, it will, right? It'll detect that the same bundle is installed. So this might not appear. Yeah, Jacob, the the missing data was the hash. If you had a hash in the feed, it would not be supplied in the detect update call. But I already, already implemented that. That's in a very recent Wix4 build. Yeah, very recently, yes. All right. So I, I do like the check for updates button on the modify page. If like I don't I'm not sure we need to automatically like show this page on the first thing if the bundle's already installed. Uh, I don't know. I, I I kind of prefer the the if you happen to be in ARP um, and running the bundle. I don't think there's harm in showing that there's an update available. Um, I think the extra click is not wanted. If your goal is to uninstall, I would agree with that. So if your goal is to uninstall, maybe you have a bug and an update would fix that for you. Advertise it before uninstall. Yeah, well, it's better than advertising after. Um, I mean, the alternative at the moment is that it's not going to get triggered because the command is going to be, or the action in the command is going to be modify, not install. So I think that's what will happen today. I will verify that, but I think what will happen today is that you get nothing. The behavior is unchanged except for an initial install. I'm not opposed to a check for updates button. I'm not particularly interested in showing that. <sighs> I guess I don't want them to have to click continue if the bundle was already installed. Well, I'm pretty sure that they won't have to. There's that in ARP, in modify mode, whether it's explicit or implicit, um, I don't think that this will show up. So if we want to add that, then we can. So Which, this you behavior know, again, on, on initial install to let you know, hey, by the way, there's a newer version of the thing you're installing. Yeah. You want that or continue. So I don't think there's been any concern about that. Basically letting you know there's an mm -hmm. update during initial install. There's then how much do we do during modify, which at the moment it sounds like nothing, but a check for update would be interesting if we add maybe a button versus go through the experience the initial install experience. Am I summarizing that? I think that's accurate, yes. For me, it's mostly the initial install one that I wanted to see. The check for update is interesting for modify. Yeah, button visible equals feed supplied. Yeah, uh, Jacob, the, there is, you know, the UI is blocked during the update feed. We're only parsing the top entry uh, because Burn guarantees that it's the highest version. Um, so parsing isn't the problem. It's yeah, that initial feed download. Um, there's, there's no command line switch for this. 
if you supply the feed, it will it will show up. You think button visible? Oh, like a check for updates button. I mean, the problem is generally, yeah, I, Burn does this all during detect. So if we're going to show a check for updates button, it's really more like, I mean, we could rerun detect, I suppose. Yeah, that's what you'd have to do. Run uh, Burn does send you multiple update versions, but it guarantees that the first one is the highest version. So. I told it to stop after sending me the first one. For this scenario, I don't care about intermediate versions. The straightforward scenario, the highest one makes sense. I yeah yeah. I don't know. I mean, all the data is there. I started it, caring, and then I'm like, oh wait, no. Yeah. Here, pick one of these. You you're here. Here are the five versions that you missed. right right. Pick one. I, <laughs> you're like, uh, I like the third one, Keith. No, I. I don't, that's not the way software is working anymore at all. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. theoretically, this page could show a link for every version that's available. That's no, right. it can't. No, it can't. <laughs> <laughs> he said theoretically, which is true. No, no, no. I tried. It doesn't work. Oh, <laughs> we don't have a list? Oh. Anyway. No, no. <laughs> no hyperlinks. Nope. All right. The, the initial install is, is like, awesome like and the modify if it's like yeah that doesn't fit in four because there's all these other scenarios to think about i'm totally like i totally understand that but i'm really glad we're getting it on the initial install have an implementation yeah yeah and and you know again i'm triggering this page based on the presence of the feed um you know we we could do more there if yeah you know, i don't know if you don't want to show it or you know maybe we want an option to force it speaking of how lots of software works yeah yeah, that, yeah jacob again i tried but nope you cannot show the notes it's impossible <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's true i'm not sure about that one yeah the notes are used html though so it's interesting to display but we actually do have that control don't we uh i don't Well, damn it. Now I'm like intrigued. Well, I'm just I, the bare minimum here is fantastic. RTF, you're not going to cover HTML to RTF. <laughs> no, but we do. We have the now it's we have the hyperlink control. Yeah, that's not going to get you very far. <laughs> that's not okay. All right. That's okay. not going to get you Good. H1 and paragraphs and no, any of that. No. Bold. No, nope, none of that. So I think the, no, the only the only thing I seriously considered was um, was trying to see if there was a consistent spot w where I could determine a release notes link, and I don't think that that's something that the Adam that Adam Adam schema defines doesn't require that. No. Um, but right. yeah, that that's interesting. Especially in 4X. Or 5. Yep. The Wix BA in 4 did show the notes. Sure, the Wix BA was designed for the feed that it had. Yeah. I don't remember that. I, think I added it. <laughs> when? In 4, when Phil oh, oh, made oh. all those changes. Oh, okay, okay. But, but then it went away. <laughs> yeah, it's still in the... E2E oh, tests. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to take a look. My big managed bundles is an example. All right. Cool. Awesome. Uh, onward. Um, 6901. Handle update hashes as hex string. Oh, look. Another bug for me. Yes. Um, if if we want to do it, I, so I kind of waffle on this. When I was working on the updater, um, the the engine 
expects you to send a, a blob of bytes for the hash. Um, yeah, that's straightforward to do. It's actually, it's actually easier to do in native code in a native BA, like Quick Standard BA, than it is in a managed BA because, oh look, dutil has handy little functions to convert from the blob to a string. Um, and when I added the, the hash reporting to the engine, when it's parsing the atom feed, I sent the hash as a string because of course that's what's in the, the feed. And then I realized, oh, I have to convert it to a blob to give it to the engine. And like, that seems harsher than necessary. Um, but I wasn't sure, you know, I, I don't, I don't particularly care because I've now solved the problem and I don't generally write managed BAs. Um, but I wanted to bring this up as a, Hey, should we just, you know, support hex strings for hashes instead of the blob and therefore make life easier for everyone. I don't know. No one's complained about it, so. <laughs> Likely in the fact that no one has been using it because until recently there was no support for it in the engine. The engine wasn't sending along the hashes if they existed, so. It's it's mostly a question for people who write managed BAs because, like I said, it's easy in in if you're using DUDL. I don't have a strong feeling. Either way. Should we should we always send it as a byte array? Yeah, maybe. Is it it's always a byte array, right? Sorry, what? The this the hash is always a byte array. Well, uh, I mean, you'd always use it. At, sorry, you'd always use it. At, I mean, is there ever a point where you show? I guess when would you want to use a string if you want to show it in the UI? The only, it's only the OS or OS layers that want a you know blob of bytes. When you talk about a commit hash, you're not talking about a blob of bytes. You're talking about the hex string. The yeah, feed so right, contains a hex string. Right now, burn actually will convert it back to a string to log it if the hash was <laughs> right. wrong. Yeah, right, right, right. As far as I can tell, this you know set update callback or engine method is the only place where we deal with you know, the two different layers talking about hashes. Yeah, that makes sense. That doesn't surprise me at all. I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I think we need a bigger survey to know for sure which way is the right way. And we won't get that for a bit. Well, I'm suggesting there's no right way. It's just it's so the, a question the preferred, of convenience. The preferred way. Sorry, oh, not the right okay. way. I should have said preferred way, right? What is, you know, after N people use this, we'd find that maybe split 50-50 or leaning one way or the other. And I, I don't right. know how to predict that right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so when I was implementing the, the 6353 to send the hash from the feed to the BA, I sent it as a string. Didn't occur to me to send it as a blob because why would I? I already had it as a string. Um, so it was only when I started implementing Wix standard BA updates that I realized that, oh, right. So right now it's a little inconsistent, which is the primary reason I opened the bug. Because again, for me, it was a one line thing. Jacob says it's a one line for a managed BA. Um, no, Jacob today, 
the callback that the BA gets for each update passes the hash as a string. No blobs. So if if it I know it's easy, it's trivial for a native BA to do it. I don't know how trivial it is. I mean it's it's a convert method, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm perfectly fine closing this as meh. I don't care. Yeah, I, I because I, 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 literally I don't care. Yeah, I to me it's a when we have more data, it's a we pick this way. And in the future, maybe we will pick a different way when we get feedback to say that we picked the wrong way the first time. But I don't know. Sure. I just don't know how to know right now. I don't have a strong. I don't have a strong feeling either way. Okay. Like I said, the only reason I opened it is that it's slightly inconsistent. We're sending a string in the callback, but the engine method uses the blob. That that I might care more about. It almost feels like you should be the same. Yeah. So I, I might one so you don't have to change it to go through like yeah but i don't know which one i would pick i pick the string because i don't want to deal with blobs in the messages manage stuff no those are fine it's the it's oh the conversion into managed code yeah it's the managed code I don't generally write managed BAs, so I'm not thrilled about I think being doing something that isn't straightforward. More valuable than anything else. I, that, that's from this conversation. I'd say be consistent between the two. Which to pick? I as uh, a toss up for me. Don't make everybody convert it. Essentially. Like whatever we're passing yeah. around, don't make everybody convert it. Make it the same thing. That was really annoying. Why'd you do that to me? Oh well, yeah, okay, let's not do that. So strings. I'm not against strings everywhere. Sure. Okay, strings. Then I'll do it. Okay. All right. And we covered the last one of today. All right. Good stuff. <sighs> nice. I have to disagree because I think I got all the bugs. I, I do too. <laughs> but they're all in this area. Yeah, fine. <laughs> all in this area. All right. Uh, going back. Questions, comments. Uh, see, I even forgot to switch this slide. What am I doing here? All right. Operator error. Any questions, comments, things people want to talk about, other stuff going on? Um, let's see, we're, we're marching down the bugs in Wix 4. That's the focus. That's the thing. If you have a Wix 4 bug, mm, Jacob, uh, it'd be great to push that thing along. Um, I know Bob, Sean, and I are kicking our bugs down. They're getting lower and lower and lower. Uh, we are almost on one page of Wix 4 bugs, which is kind of exciting. Um, so, uh, that's... That's, I don't know, random milestones. Basically, it means that we have 25 or less issues. Uh, I'm, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in now. Uh, other things. Um, I started a stream yesterday. If you hadn't, didn't see where I am switched from doing presentations where I'm talking, actually doing development in the Wix tool set, fixing bugs and things like that, to switching to use the Wix tool set itself um, and having some fun doing that. So it's a different, it's switching modes from being a Wix toolset developer to a Wix developer or Wix toolset user. Um, so I'm doing that on every Wednesdays uh, at noon 30 Pacific time. So all of you advanced guys that are here looking at the internals of Wix, I, right now I expect that stream is very uh, basic for you. You could, you're welcome to hang out, things like that. We will work into more complicated topics, I think. It'll just take us a few weeks to get there because I'm purposely starting um, at the very beginning. But uh, even that is, I think, is kind of interesting if you haven't been using Wix 4 yet um, to, to, to see what it looks like now. It's like, oh, look, you don't need the media template. Product is now package. Oh, and the directory, that yeah. sounds interesting. I started at the beginning. You get to see the very beginnings of things. So, Ron, yeah, I, I have your pull request open in a tab um, in my web browsers, which means it's on my checklist of things to get done. Um, and because I don't close tabs, I'm not those 
Oh, I think I saw something about you not having audio. I mentioned earlier, I have a whole bunch of tabs open. When I have those open, they're all things I have to do. I'm not a person that leaves 50,000 tabs running around everywhere. It's in my list of things to accomplish because nobody else did it while I was off on vacation last week and been catching up this week. So uh, it's there. And if you're looking for the next thing, uh, if you're looking for stuff to do in Wix, I'm just going to do Wix v4.0 right here, this milestone. And there's a way of just getting this to be just a milestone. If I think if I remember, I just do that, right? Oh, and I want open. Do you want to be sharing your browser? Oh yes, thank you. I gotta switch back to the back to the part where I'm showing you the things. All right, milestone is issue is milestone. I was sure there's a way to get a nice clean issue here. Maybe this alone was enough. There it is. This is a nice clean URL. Oh, you can't see the URL. Man, I did all that work for a URL you can't see. Um, anyway, I'll drop it in chat. Uh, this URL is a nice clean way to see all the things left in Wix 4.0. And if you see a bug that's not assigned to anybody and you want to take it, you certainly could do that because nobody's working on those right now. Um, just say, hey, I, I think you just have to leave a comment on an issue and then we can assign it to you. And maybe you'll be like, hey, you don't actually want this issue. Or by the way, here's all these other things to think about. But if you leave a comment on that, uh, that would work. So we're a little higher now. Oh, we're at 32. Oh man, I totally miscounted then. I thought we were at 26, whatever. Well, um, I just added all of my bugs. Oh, that's probably what I'm saying. Anyway. Yeah, I'm sharing the joy. Yes, yes, yes. So um, anyway, so uh, taking a bug here, or if you really want, we could go try to dig in. I don't have any bugs to hand off right now because unless you want patching, I'd happy to give away patching. No, patching is really hard, so I'm not. Uh, um, anyway, so that's where I have. Someone wanted to jump in. Yeah, it's like go jump into milestones v4 github.com slash wix tool set slash issues slash milestones slash v4.0 and you can see everything that we're doing. It's also a great way to see our progress. When this gets to zero, uh, we are, and we don't think we're getting any other bugs that we're going to fix, we're done. Right? That, this is kind of the measure of being done or not, this is the measure of being done. The only variable on it is if we think there's more bugs out there we haven't found yet, which I know there are plenty of bugs out there we haven't found yet. Um, I'm confident of that. But we know about these right here in front of us. So if you wanna help us with the ones that are open, that's great. You can start picking Wix 4 around and opening more issues as you use things. That will help as well, things like that. So all different ways of moving forward. And yes, I know your pull request is open and I will get to it. Other things people are doing, talking about wanting to get involved, do stuff, other things like that. Going once, going twice, slowly. All right, all right. I think that's where we're at. Uh, if everything works correctly, we will be back in two weeks. Uh, but Sean said he's out of town. So if we want to make sure Sean's there, we can move it to the 29th. Uh, that would be the last Thursday in September. Um, when I'm gone, we lose all the technology to present and Sean and Bob have shown no interest in continuing. So Sean, do you want us to wait for you or do you want us to do triage without you? I don't know. We could wait three weeks because the way bugs are coming in, three weeks might just save us up some extra stuff. Uh, plus, I really don't want another meeting where I get all the bugs. So, <laughs> oh, Although yeah. if Sean's not here... He can be the he can he can get the bugs right. Sure. sure. Yeah, that's really that's really tempting. I think that's the way that works, right? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, your vote, Sean. Uh, you want us to wait? We can wait till the 29th. Three weeks. Last one in September. I might just miss it because we need this schedule. Sure. So the 22nd, then, we'll stay on target for two weeks from now, the 22nd, uh, which is normal time. And Bob and I will muddle our way through the issues without Sean. Um, and Sean will have all of them assigned to him. So it would be a very quick meeting, I expect. Uh, yeah, uh, really. really. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we won't have any by the time we get there. Um, I, I don't know what that likelihood is either. Our incoming has been okay. It actually feels okay right now. What are the chances you finish patching in two weeks? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm I'm like right now the last couple the last couple of days I've been just writing tests for all of the patching stuff, 
and that has uncovered more issues. So it's it's kind of a uh, one step forward, two steps back right now kind of thing. So I really have a hard time knowing how far away I am, but by adding all the tests, I'm more confident that at least I will have covered a lot of the space where and patching is very big. So the the answer to that is I just don't know. Um, it's okay. also not like I'm deeply comfortable. I'm getting more comfortable, but I'm not deeply comfortable in patching either. So I don't have a lot of intuition in it. But in two weeks, I should be definitely farther along. Um, it's it's not out of the realm that I'm not you know somewhere interesting. I would love to be done next week, but I don't have a lot of confidence that that happens either. <laughs> Um, so yeah. And the interesting thing is that after I finish patching, then we start, you know, have to start taking a critical eye at all the stuff that's re remaining too. How many other things are out there that, because patching has been that long pull, known long pull for so long, how many more things are, um, out there beyond that long pull issue? So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited about that stuff when really right now the focus is on finishing the issues that are in front of us. So that's what we're doing. Uh, if you have more, please do get them. We're, we have to get all the bugs out of Wix 4. Uh, it's feeling pretty good. Like I said, when I get past patching, a whole lot of Vista will open up and we'll um, start making next layer plans. I'm pretty excited about that. All right. I feel like I filled a lot of space given random hints at the future. Uh, most of it is, hey, Rob's got to fix patching, which is kind of where it's been for a while. We'll be back in two weeks to stay on schedule. That will be right here, right now. Well, 9.30 Pacific time uh, in September 22nd. And I think from there, we're good. So until then, all of you guys take it easy. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.